What's going on guys? Cody from Motorcycle MD, and in this video, we'll get straight to it. We're pulling the carbs out of a CB900F. If you're on a mailing list, you would know that I just launched the CB900F or early 80s, 750, even some 1100 hurricane stuff. The carburetor cleaning masterclass I've been working on for a long time. This is completely tearing these things apart, but I ripped a video straight from that masterclass on just removing them. And I thought it would be helpful to show you guys if you're into going this far into the carburetors and getting the bike to run perfectly. This is the video that will help you get to the next step, pulling them out, taking the carbs out of the CB900F, particularly very similar with little variables when it comes to the 750 or the 1100, but I want to remove that intimidation of going after this type of job. So enjoy the video, have fun, I'll see you at the end. All right guys, we are arrived. Carb removal. Okay, obviously you're watching this. It's time to go into the carburetors, whether you have a 80s model, like usually like 80s and up 750 or the CB900F, like specifically what we're working on here. It's relatively the same. The 900F may be a little bit different from the 800. I mean, sorry, the 750. Um, but we're going to dive in. And I shot this video in the comfort of my home uh, with loud music blaring because I just needed to get the job done. But it is time for me to do an audio over. So I'll be in and out of this thing while you watch it. Try to put some cool, chill vibes going while you're watching it. Um, and I'll pop in and out when I think there's something that's important to say. Okay, but 900F is the 81. We're going to be just removing the carbs from the system. So I'm attacking it from a bunch of different angles. The camera may switch and change. But ultimately, what you need to know about removing the carbs is going to be in this video. First, we'll start off by removing the set bolts for the air box, okay? You'll see that there's like, this one's actually on like a slotted section of the frame. It allows you to move it back. I just take, I yeah, usually either try to keep it in or I'll just take the bolt out completely. Um, and there's like maybe two or three other ones that are kind of holding framature for where all those electronics are. You see right there on the right hand side of the screen, maybe controlling another part of the, of the frame that's keeping the air box from coming all the way back. I like to just loosen all of them up so the air box has full free play to move it all around, okay? Obviously, I'm gonna go in after each of the clamps. It's not too much that's needing to be talked about that, but we'll just let this roll, and again, I'll pop in and out, and I hope you enjoy it. So now I'm kind of just going. I'm kind of going back and forth between hose clamps and actual lines to the carbs, kind of figuring it all out. So I'm going to tackle these lines just to get them off of the carbs as much as I can. They're pretty self-explanatory. Take pictures on your way in. That's the best advice I can give you. Hopefully this video will be referenced for you. But feel free to take pictures, man. It's it's I do it. It's don't be ashamed of it. It's just it's super helpful to help you organize what's coming in. How did it look when you when it came apart? The only questionable thing about doing that is when you're taking the picture, the way that it's routed, the way the hose are laid out, is that the right way? You know, because the person before you, especially if you have an old bike, 70s, 80s, 90s, someone's probably been in there before. The likelihood of them not knowing exactly what they're doing is very high. Um, so obviously manual is good to look at for hose running, but it doesn't always help. But this bike in particular is bone stock. Someone did go into the carbs, but the way that all the hoses are routed is all correct. I've already checked all that. So just going in off of various lines, removing the C-clamps, Nina nose pliers works amazing for this. Um, these hoses were very stiff, almost rock hard. So you see I work at them for quite some time.
What I want to do now is just remove the bulky items from the carbs. You don't have to do this right away. I just want to do it just to get it out of my sight. But take this whole vacuum operated system off. See, I tried. The Phillips head screws were stuck in there. So quick little tip for any of your Phillips head drivers. I use JIS. Links are all in the parts and tools needed. JIS screwdrivers will be your saving grace when it comes to anything Japanese or um, overseas, not, not American. But a one quick little wrap of a hammer, maybe two hits on it, will save you tons of time when removing screws and not stripping them out. Um, just It sends a shock down the threads and it helps so much. You can see I couldn't get it before. Two quick wraps of the hammer and it comes right out. So I'll just remove these screws and I'll probably put them back in here into the frame. But I'll just take this out of my way. One less thing to worry about. I'll worry about it later. You also see that I've been removing two lines. Actually, there's four lines total that goes to this stupid fuel valve. Very hard to rebuild. Parts are out there. I'll try to put some links in there for you guys in the parts and tools needed. But there's two hoses, two smaller hoses. One's the actual vacuum operated hose that runs to cylinder, I think one or two. And the other one's just like a vent. It's like a breather, just runs down the back of the case. You see it kind of laying right there on top of the airbox. So two big uh, fuel tubes. One goes from the tank to the carbs. The other two are one's vacuum operated, very important. I'd replace that and one's just like a breather. It's not too crazy. Just obviously have one installed. Alright, so all the clamps are loose on the airbox side. Time to switch over. We gotta grab this choke cable that is wedged between cylinder two and three. Um, simple clamp, crack it loose, pull the line out of that stay. And um, I kind of maneuver the cable downward, okay, to get it off of the um, choke linkage. Um, to just work with it. It's not the easiest thing to do, it's in a really weird spot hard to get to but you ultimately drive the line down past the carbs to pull it out of its linkage once you get it out i'm actually replacing this choke cable because it snapped because the guy had to run it in choke for so long that he was using it all the time every day pulling the choke out pulling it in pulling the choke out pulling it in and that's the only way he get, could get it to run so he snapped it with just age and how much force it took to pull those carbs up so get it out replace it if you can that'd be ideal because they're um, they it is common for those chokes to break not the link or the cable itself but up at the fastening point where you actually pull the plunger out that's where it breaks at kind of weird but yeah do your worst Okay, now we've moved to the engine side, making progress. Loosen all those all those up. I'm not sure if those clamps are stock or not. I want to say they are. Um, but after you get all of these loose, I just move right to the throttle cables. There's no real order to this. Um, any order is good. But pay attention to how these throttle cables are orientated. Because you got one that has a lock nut, then you have one that doesn't. The one I'm working on now is the one that does. I want to say that that's the pool cable. Um, and that's where you have most adjustment at the throttle cables itself as far as free play goes up at the throttle twist tube. I guess is the best word I can come up with right now. So loosen them up. You might not be able to get them out right now. Okay, but just loosen them up. Once you pull, once we pull the carbs off of the uh, head and the airbox is out of the way and we kind of pull the carbs out towards us, it'll be a lot easier to get them out. I'm, I can't remember if I actually was able to achieve getting them out right now. The same thing goes for installing them. Install them before you go in with the carbs because they are a bear to put those auto cables on. Again, I might work them out here with just pure black magic. I can't remember. <music> Yep. 
Black Magic Initiated. Alright, progress is made again. Kind of pry them bad boys off of the head, depending on how how bad those rubber intake boots are. It might be a pain. Block of wood to protect the fins. Try to go vertically with the fins. Don't pry on the fins. Don't use it as a wedge. Don't do any of that. You will snap the fin off, and that sucks. So a nice block of wood to be nice and vertical with it, so it's equal pressure along the head while I pry these bad boys up off the head. Makes it super easy. Um. I use a little flat bar, crowbar, you can use whatever you got, a little 2x4 in there, some wedge action might actually help as well, but again, here we go, prying them downward, just trying to get them out of the head, and, I'm, and I guess what I'm trying to do is get them above the air box, um, I don't think that going downward would be very efficient, because it would just kind of put you in a bind, so point the rear end of the carbs up, and we're going to go, I believe, out the left hand side of the frame. So I pull them all the way up past both intakes, airbox side and the head. That gives me a little bit of a wiggle room, sorry, um, to kind of slowly wedge them out of the left hand side of the bike. Look at that, one big empty gaping hole. Time to show off what we've done. Carbs are out of 900F. We're about to dive into these full throttle Buckle up, get ready for a ride, because we're going to go all the way into these things. All right, guys, that's it. Hope you liked it. Comment below. Let me know if this is a repair or maintenance thing that you want to really get into. If you don't know, I offer many different carburetor cleaning courses, okay, from single carb, twin carb, inline fours, and now especially this 900F. I have shot a step-by-step -step process to do this correctly with some pro tips when it comes to tuning them, and to really just guide you through what this process looks like and what it entails. Any of you who are watching this are already in the inner circle, you've had full access to this for a while. But for you, the guy with the 900F or the 750, even the Hurricane 1100 who wants to clean the carburetors, maybe you just picked the bike out of a barn and it's time to get it running, this is gonna be one of the first three steps you're going to need to do to get the bike running properly. And I wanted to show you how to do that. So if you're interested, below in the description I have a link that goes straight to that page for you to own that course. You have it forever. Take your time with the carbs. It's not time sensitive. You own those videos and that walk through step-by-step -step process for as long as you need. And if you're not on the mailing list, be sure to join it. I'll throw you something a little bit extra as well as a free troubleshooting guide when it comes to your motorcycles. It's been helping a lot of people. I think you might find it helpful as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like, share, comment as usual. I would appreciate it. And for any of you who are going out to the carburetors, I think you'll find so much value in this course. So enjoy. Be sure to follow me on Instagram, forward slash TheMotorcycleMD. Check out my website, TheMotorcycleMD.com. I have some cool shirts up there that you can show your support with. Until next time, Cody from MotorcycleMD, bringing you guys some quality tips and tricks for your next build or your daily ride. Later.